Hello and welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is American Ben and today we are going to break down our list of the most overrated aliens in science fiction. Unlike our list of the most underrated aliens, this list is going to contain some of the most famous Xenos rather than more obscure ones as in order to be overrated you have to actually be well known and held in high esteem. The Tau for instance are not overrated. They just suck. And of course, because we've put widely beloved aliens on this list, many of you are sure to send me well-intentioned death threats in the mail. But before you start extracting blood to pen your letter in or cutting out letters of the alphabet from magazine pages, do note, this isn't a list of worst alien races or least likable alien races or even of the least thoughtfully created alien races. It's only a list of the most overrated alien races. Pizza is highly overrated, for instance, but it's still the most scrumptious edible on the face of the planet, and possibly even within our star system, unless you put pineapple on it, you goddamn monsters. Speaking of scrumptious edibles, which I have to thank for getting many of you to sit back and dive into endless forays of our absolutely meaningless content, let's talk about Wookiees. Mmm, Wookiees. Yes, not only do Wookiee thighs go great in pies, but they are also our first entry, aka sixth place on this list. Not the thighs, the whole Wookiee. And yes, I told you I'm expecting death threats. Now, Wookiees are a bit of a sore spot for me because once on this channel, half serious and half in jest, I implied that they're kind of dumb. And I will never hear the end of it, and yes, I went a touch too far. Wookiees are, after all, not only powerful beasts capable of ripping a person's limbs off with ease, they are, at least according to experts, highly intelligent beings. Actually, according to some Star Wars intellectuals, they are highly sophisticated thinkers and there is some evidence to back up this assertion. They make for excellent pilots and navigators, seemingly can learn to fly just about any ship in short order, and when tech on board breaks down, don't worry because Wookiees also make for great mechanics. And if you ask a Wookiee apologist, he'll probably tell you that these hairy beasts are good battlefield strategists and communicators as well. But while I will admit that Wookiees are impressive warriors, I just don't totally buy the extent to which Wookiee intelligence is hyped up. If Chewbacca is a supremely smart individual, much of the canonical content he appears in doesn't do much to show it. Sure, sometimes he does smart, sentient, being-esque things, but then again, a lot of the time he acts smart in the way a dog might. He follows orders, communicates through a mix of physical cues and inarticulate noises, is a loyal friend, eats whatever he can get his hands on, and bashes enemies with the unrelenting brutality one might expect of any house-trained beast. The problem here is that canon is kind of contradictory as far as Wookiees go, and so we're left to debate just how competent they are, though Imperial Law does agree with me, I'm just saying. Anyway, the issue here is that some fans get a bit too zealous in defending Wookiee intelligence, and this leads them to ending up on our list. In fifth place, we have the Arachnids from Starship Troopers. The Arachnids, of course, are a deadly race. They are responsible for the murder of good humans across the galaxy, and many Argentinians as well. They're a hive or horde race, and so they have numbers. Overwhelming, unstoppable numbers, and this, more than anything, makes them a devastating foe. However, when compared with other Hive races, such as the Zerg or Tyranids, they're really nothing special. First off, humans can kill them fairly easily. I'd argue the main reasons the mobile infantry gets massacred by the bugs at times are poor planning, poor training, and possibly even some conspiracy on the part of the United Citizen Federation. A few shots to the nerve stem with a standard Marita rifle is enough to fell just about any warrior bug, and explosives will do the trick for stronger breeds. Speaking of stronger breeds, they're not that hard to access in order to destroy. The brain bug is not embedded deep in a highly fortified hive ship as the Tyranid's Norn Queen is. No, they're much more exposed to the enemy as we saw with the one the mobile infantry took down on planet P. That one was simply hidden in tunnels on the planet's surface. Even god bugs sit similarly vulnerable beneath the planet's surface, though much deeper down, and can be destroyed by simply Q-bombing said planet. Norn Queens, on the other hand, are protected by the advanced biotech of their ships, which only grows more complex as invaders get nearer to the center, which almost 
never happens anyway. All hive races are not very mentally sophisticated on the grassroots level, but the arachnids referring to the films, not the book, are especially simple-minded. They can be tricked, cornered, and put down with some simple gunfire. In fourth place, we have the Eldar from Warhammer 40k. The Eldar are one of the more revered space elf races in sci-fi. They're highly advanced in terms of their technology, their craft worlds are some of the most impressive vessels in all of Xenodum, and both they and their tech are infused with potent psychic abilities. Here's the thing, while we view the Eldar as wise and powerful sages, the truth is their society is always teetering on the brink of collapse because they're extremely vulnerable to temptation and vice. The Lord of Excess, Lanesh, feasts on their strong emotions and uses their life force to strengthen itself. Thus, their very destruction is an overt goal of a Chaos God, and really any enemy can lead them to falter by exposing them to pleasure. Their very success is their hindrance, because the more they thrive, the more exposed to temptation they become, and the more they invite their own doom. Despite their strengths, this Catch-22 is not the hallmark of an alien race destined for perpetual prosperity. And their brethren, the Dark Eldar, aren't any less overrated. The Drukhari are a more demonic and savage offshoot of the Craftworld Eldar. They're an absolutely terrifying foe in theory, as their ranks boast a host of different deadly warriors and beasts. However, they can also be viewed as a worse version of the Eldar. Rather, they're like the Eldar without the psychic powers or wisdom. They reject their psychic abilities to guard themselves from Slanesh's reach, which, okay, is a pro on one hand, but then again takes away what makes the Eldar most imposing. The various cabals of the Dark Eldar are also often too busy killing each other to repair a proper defense against enemies. They betray and murder each other regularly. In other words, their society lacks any form of unity. Given all of these reasons, despite their lofty reputation, the Eldar and all their forms are overrated. In third place, we have the Covenant from Halo. The primary enemies of humanity for much of Halo's story are decidedly well-known and deservedly so. They are a really well thought out and diverse race, and certainly I wouldn't want to run afoul of any hierarchs by bad talking them on YouTube. That said, I'm a shit talk them into oblivion because on the whole, they actually aren't much to be afraid of, especially in comparison to the other advanced alien races within our purview. First off, the structure of Covenant society rests on a delicate balance, or better yet, a tenuous illusion. The illusion being that a forerunner intelligence called the Oracle rests at the top of society, when in reality, the long, silent, omniscient Oracle is really just an inactive decoy that allows the Covenant elite, namely the Hierarch, to bend society to their will. If this truth is divulged, it could cause unrest and insurrection throughout the Covenant ranks, when the Lower Downs discover that all of their hopes and prayers are a lie. And the Covenant don't only worship the Forerunners, they also get all of their technology, or at least blueprints for their technology, from them. So while the Covenant have powerful ships, weapons, and other gadgets, their tech is the product of imitation rather than innovation, and additionally, religious doctrine constrains them from attempting to learn the ways in which the Forerunners created their technology. Thus, they have the superior firepower in the galaxy in the time in which we witness Halo's story take place, but their technological development is largely stagnant and will likely remain that way while the humans are catching up. And of course, just as they can't make technological innovations, Covenant battle tactics are also uninspired. The Covenant may simply have evolved into poor planners, but it's likely that the ages they've spent with superior tech have rendered tactical creativity and strategic thinking unnecessary. And indeed, humans are regularly able to defeat them by outthinking them. In second place, we have Klingons. Klingons are revered as some of the most noble and brave warriors in the galaxy. They raise their offspring from young to fight hard and be unafraid of death. Here's the thing. Klingons are way overrated, as they're really not that menacing in reality. First, they're always fighting each other, and their leaders are often too arrogant and angry to make intelligent tactical or romantic decisions. Their weapons and tech are also kind of overhyped. I mean, the Batleth is cool, but a simple bladed weapon seems kind of insufficient for space wars that feature phaser guns. This leads us into another problem they have. Honor. They do stupid things for honor all the time, rather than take the most efficient action or execute the best battle strategy or use the best weapon, they will do as their honor commands, even if it destroys them. 
This works on an individual level as well. There are instances in which Klingons would rather kill themselves in ritual suicide than bear the shame of dishonor. Though to be fair, Klingons don't always fall through on their threats to off themselves. To be honest though, the main reason Klingons are overrated is that they kind of suck at fighting. Makbara must be one of those bullshit martial arts whose portly instructors teach their adherents to knock people down with chi power, because Worf gets his ass kicked all the time. Finally, in first place, we have the Daleks from Doctor Who. I imagine this one is definitely going to garner me some pushback. And hey, I know the Daleks are powerful. I mean, they can time travel for heaven's sakes. But I mean, look at them. They're blocky and slow. I mean... They are the one alien race I know of that can be felled by a staircase. Later models have flight capabilities, but still, little imagination to go with unmerited overconfidence. The eye stalk of the Dalek is also extremely vulnerable. If an enemy breaks it, the Dalek will most likely panic and go berserk. Actually, even beyond their eyepieces, Daleks can often be overcome by energy weapons or explosives, or even viruses, actually. Yes, whereas most alien races are highly adaptable, Daleks are extremely vulnerable to viruses, which we humans are great at spreading. It's like our only superpower. Worst of all, the primary strength of the Dalek, its casing, isn't an organic part of it. Its technology is technology that can be piloted by anyone with reasonable brain power. So their casings can be used against them. And furthermore, the creature inside the casing is weak and when exposed can easily be destroyed. So, despite their plot armor, Daleks are not that mighty of a race. Anyway, that's our list of the most overrated aliens. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a big thumbs up. Definitely comment down below. Let me know what you think I got wrong, what I got right, and what I missed all together. Remember to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. For now, my name is American Ben, and I'll catch you next time. Generation Films, peace.